Welcome back. We're having a look at lightweight Linux distributions in this series. And that means that usually when you come across a operating system that is made to run on machines of older hardware, you're inevitably going to make some compromises. What we've been trying to explore over the course of this series, which there'll be links below and up in the cards, is how much sacrifice do you have to make to be able to run a fully featured operating system based on Linux on older hardware. And this suggestion came from the subscribers of this channel. If you're not one, then feel free to remedy that below. But Q4OS is a interesting option based on Debian. Now this time around, while they offer a bunch of different desktops that you can install, I was intrigued to check out the Trinity desktop. And I, that was the one I was recommended. Reason being is because the Trinity desktop hails from an era when computing was dominated by Microsoft's Windows XP. And honestly, that's the vibe I get all around this thing. Windows XP is back, baby. All right, so the Windows XP vibe definitely comes from off a bit more than just the appearance. Obviously, the Trinity desktop is uh, what preceded or was originally KDE 3. It preceded the Plasma 4 desktop era. That was when I jumped on board with KDE back in the late 2000s. Uh, and KDE 4 was a uh, was a, quite a departure from uh, KDE 3 and the uh, and what is now known as the Trinity desktop. What you're going to notice is everything that we remember from computing of yesteryear. So menu bars everywhere. Check. Lots of context menus when you hover over items, little window pop outs. Check. Everything is in a linear file structure. Everything is menu driven. And while Q4OS have done a pretty good job at presenting a default look and feel here that is slightly more modern in terms of aesthetics, color palette, and icon design, uh, you can very quickly change that to look like the computing era of Windows XP. I mean, check this out, you ready? And just like that, wake up bro, it's 2003. Now, not only do the fonts look particularly garbage in this particular setup, but you're gonna notice that uh, we've even reverted beyond Windows XP. We've gone way back to Windows 98, maybe even Windows 95 at this point. But this goes to show you how long the Trinity desktop or KDE 3 had been around for. It spanned an era of personal computing that was pre-internet and continued through till the modern internet era. And the fact that the Trinity desktop is still alive and kicking and kicking on less than a gig of RAM, might I add, is uh, nothing short of remarkable. So I thought I'd bring it back to a more modern look and feel just so that my eyes don't bleed while I'm doing this video. As far as the Trinity desktop itself, I've never actually looked at the Trinity desktop in a video and maybe it's a separate deep dive for a separate video. But in terms of the overall desktop layout and the way that it's presented here on Q4OS, it's a pretty standard affair in terms of you've got the classic Windows uh, taskbar panel. You have a system tray that while it does have some interactive widgets, these widgets start to show the age of the overall desktop in that not all of the iconography has been updated with the modern sort of flat papyrus look and feel. And some of the system tray icons are kind of living in a weird order. There is a collapsible tray here, again, Windows XP, holla, but scratch below the surface of most corners of the Trinity desktop and you'll be taken right back to the early 2000s, which, uh, you know, it's not necessarily a bad thing. It's just uh, plainly obvious. But what is remarkable to me is just how flexible the Trinity desktop is while still being incredibly lightweight. And Q4 OS intends to be a fairly minimal, keep out of your way, uh, iteration on based on Debian 11 to be very stable, support a wide range of hardware and be quite lightweight if you want it to be. So a few key things that Q4 OS offers as opposed to some of the other Debian based releases out there, they do have their own little curated software center, which uh, basically just suggests the most popular open source software and also ones that are more than likely to run well on older hardware. Uh, things like the QPDF view, some of the Trinity versions of the KDE apps like K3B for DVD burning and that kind of thing. A lot of these applications harken back to an era 
uh, long before the current iterations of Plasma 5. So the Amarok music player, for example, is uh, kind of frozen in time here with version 1.4, which funnily enough is the version that uh, that Clementine would end up being based off as well. So you'll see a lot of similarities here in terms of the UI layout. Now, this is kind of a video for another time in terms of uh, Trinity as a project, but it is worth mentioning here as the as the list continues to grow of lightweight Linux distributions, uh, Trinity seems to strike a remarkable balance here between uh, being not only performant and relatively smooth, uh, and it can, if themed well, look nice on old hardware. It uh, does give you an awful lot of information and feedback about what's going on in the system. This was a fully featured desktop environment back in its day, and uh, while Plasma has managed to, or current iterations of Plasma have managed to kind of remove um, some of the verbose nature of uh, the KDE project, you can still see some of that heritage coming through uh, when you look at current iterations of Trinity as that project lives on. While you can turn the desktop effects on and off and you can switch the style of the start menu to something a little more modern, the fact that they have a default look and feel which is modern, but at the same time uh, reminiscent of the Windows XP era, I think is a helpful one considering who might be running this sort of software on older hardware. Quick links to install proprietary codecs are always appreciated as well. And again, the abundance of tooltips makes things pretty easy to uh, decipher on your own. They also had a really nice pop-up with uh, scaling where uh, up upon the first boot, it actually prompted me to uh, mess with the scaling because it detected that the resolution was going to be a little bit uh, pokey on a 1080p monitor. And so I've got it at 1.1 scaling and that seemed to work pretty flawlessly. At the end of the day, there's kind of not too much more to say about this uh, distribution and what it offers, other than to say it's a stable iteration of Debian that comes with a pretty standard selection of packages, some curation in regards to the software that it has on offer, and a well-maintained uh, Trinity desktop. To me, it more represents a blast from the past that, uh, that I would no longer suit my personal needs. I can see this being right for the right user, and in for the same way that I love the Mate desktop, it reminds, it potentially can remind users of uh, a time where computing suited the way that their brains worked. And I don't think we can ever underestimate how powerful muscle memory and workflow is. The setup process is incredibly simple compared to stock Debian in terms of the Calamara's installer doing the heavy lifting and also the driver support in terms of uh, easy installation of Nvidia drivers, automatic installation of uh, VirtualBox drivers in my case, uh, means that there is some attention to detail going on behind the scenes. But at the end of the day, we have to compare a desktop like this to what else is in the lightweight space. And that is a desktop like Mate, like XFCE, and like the even lighter weight options like LXQT and OpenBox and desktops of that nature. If you want a desktop that has all the bells and whistles that you remember Windows XP having plus more, and it being all wrapped up in a pretty delicious open source package, then Q4 OS with the Trinity desktop is gonna be a worthwhile option. Coming up later in the series, we're gonna have a look at Sparky Linux, uh, especially the rolling version of that running the Mate desktop, so we can kind of get a feel of the other side of the fence when it comes to this uh, nostalgia yard that we've been hanging out in. But that'll do us for this particular episode. Let me know in the comments uh, more suggestions for your favorite lightweight Linux distribution, but definitely check I haven't covered it already. Thank you so much for watching. Catch you in the next one.